So we've shown you the basics to building a computer before, but there are a lot of things that you don't really learn until you've built a couple. But these are really, really helpful, especially your first time through building. So today we're going to share with you six tips every first time builder should know, but probably doesn't. Here's tip number one. Before you build anything inside your case, build it outside your case and make sure it works too. Unfortunately, dead on arrival parts do happen and this will save you a lot of trouble from having to take apart your computer once you find out something is broken. Just take your motherboard, put it on top of your motherboard box, install your CPU, your RAM, your CPU cooler, plug in your power supply, and start it up. If you hook it up to a monitor, see if you can boot into the BIOS, you'll be much better off and know that everything works before you go through the trouble of building it inside your case. While we're on the subject of CPUs, let's talk about the coolers and more importantly, thermal paste. First time builders may not need this because a lot of box CPU coolers come with thermal paste already on them, but if you ever replace your cooler or use a bigger third party cooler, you're going to have to apply the CPU thermal paste yourself. First, to remove the thermal paste, just put a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on some toilet paper and rub it off. You may have to do this a few times to get it completely clean. Next, it's time to apply the thermal paste. Now, I've seen some people do some crazy stuff when applying thermal paste, like applying way too much or spreading it out with a credit card before they actually put the heat sink on. It's much simpler than that. All you need to do is put a small pea-sized blob on the CPU or a small line about the size of a grain of rice. You may need to do it a little bit bigger if you have a big CPU like the LGA 2011s. You could go to your thermal paste manufacturer's website and find out which of those methods they prefer for their particular consistency of thermal paste, but Really, it's not going to make that huge of a difference. Just don't put too much on, less is more, and you'll be okay. Tip number three is to plan your build before you put it into your case. For example, if you have a CPU cooler that needs a back plate like this, that goes onto the back of your motherboard, make sure to put that on before you put your motherboard in your case. Some cases have cutouts like this, but they don't always match up, and if you don't have that cutout and you forget, you're gonna have to take your motherboard out just to put your heatsink back on. Similarly, if you have a very long graphics card, like one of AMD's higher-end cards, it's probably gonna be very close to your hard drives. So make sure you install your hard drives and plug them in first, otherwise you're gonna have to take your graphics card out just to plug in your hard drives later on. Just take a couple minutes, look at your case, plan everything out before you put it in, and you can save yourself a lot of hassle. For tip number four, I wanna talk a little bit about airflow and fans, because it's something that a lot of first time builders ignore, but it's pretty important to keep your computer running cool and quiet and dust free. So, when you first build your computer, your case is probably gonna come with a number of fans included, but if you add any, think about where they're blowing. If you look at the side of your fan, you'll see a little arrow that points to which direction the air flows through that fan. Use that to plan your airflow. You want to think about two things. One, you want your airflow to kind of all move in one direction. So usually people have intake fans in the front, uh, exhaust fans in the back, so everything flows in one direction. Two, you want to think about positive air pressure, and that means having more intake fans than you have exhaust fans. If you put filters on all of your intake fans, that means that your computer is going to be much more dust free and it's going to run cooler, quieter, and for a longer period of time. Tip number five is simple. You're going to get these driver disks that come with all of your hardware. Generally, you don't want to install drivers from those disks. Instead, go to the manufacturer's website and download the latest drivers. Not only will they be newer and more up-to-date, but you won't have any of the bundled software that comes with them. The only exception is Ethernet drivers because, well, if you don't have Ethernet drivers, you can't download all the other drivers. So, if you need them, you can install those from the disk. Tip number six is for after you're done. Keep those anti-static bags and those boxes that came with your parts. Not only will it make it easier to sell those when you want to upgrade, because you can sell old computer parts online, but the motherboard box actually makes a really great place to store all those cables and brackets and screws and all the things you didn't use but you might need down the road for upgrades. Keep them all in your motherboard box and you'll never lose them. You want to go to your manufacturer's website and download the latest drivers. Not only will you get late, uh, well, not only will you get laid. Not only will you get laid if you download the drivers from Gigabyte's website. Oh my god. Uh, 